Do you feel like we're at that moment in the US? And one of the manifestations of that, I'll say, is government spending, because everyone demands more from their government and the government steps up and the elected officials that they elect step up and spend more and it layers and it layers and layers. And we now have a $33 trillion debt load. And we have a one and a half trillion dollar annual deficit. And by many projections, Social Security will be bankrupt in anywhere from 10 to 15 years, uh, 10 to 20 years, whatever numbers you want to use. The CBO assumes we're going to have unsustainable spiraling debt. What is your point of view on where we are in the cycle, how it's manifesting today, and how we're going to deal with the fiscal issues that arise from these movements? Yeah, so I think where we are in that in the cycle I don't take that as a passive law of physics. I think that who runs this country and leads this country can make an actual difference in the actual underlying course of that so-called cycle, which is part of what pulls me into this. So I'm a little bit unconventional on uh, my views on the debt load and the entitlement spending in this country and our first step in our way out of it. I, I don't think we're at a place of having remotely enough consensus or trust, and I think trust is probably the more important word than consensus, to begin just snip, snip, make cuts to what people feel like they were entitled to and promised, especially at a moment where we're beginning with deep distrust that will take what you call those populist flames and throw kerosene on it. <clears throat> I do, I'm more optimistic about this, and I think this is quite realistic, actually, is that the next leap forward is we can grow our way out of, I'm not going to say all, but most of our actual fiscal calam pending fiscal calamity right this year i mean i think like right now last six months we're talking less than 1.5 percent annualized gdp growth what we're averaging right now for most of our national history we actually grown at over four plus percent gdp growth certainly if you go back to the pre-gold standard period and even after going off the gold standard we had a relatively stable us dollar and i am one of these weird guys who believes that the fed should have a single mandate of dollar stability without playing the phillips curve game but anyway, put that sidetrack to one side, we've grown at 3 4% GDP growth for most of our national history, even relatively recent national history. And I don't think it's a complicated path to get back there. I think things we need to do, unlock American energy. There's, you know, we talk about secular religions. I view the climate cult as one of those secular religions. What's your Drill, energy plan? Frack. What would your specific well, energy plan be? Completely, completely... Uh, unlock the permitting process that they've used as a backdoor mechanism to shut down American energy production. Drilling, fracking, burning coal. Coal should not be a four-letter word. Embracing nuclear energy. Later tonight, like after we're having this conversation, this evening, I'm going to be at St. Anselm College laying out my detail. It's going to be like a giant poster <laughs> laying out the anatomy of how I will shut down the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, which has been a fundamentally hostile administrative agency to the existence of nuclear power in this country, actually even to the detriment of actually making sure that we are getting our nuclear energy from Gen 2 rather than Gen 3 or Gen 4 reactors. But that'll be for tonight. It's an all of the above approach of unshackling ourselves to produce energy here in the United States. To your point about, you know, Dave made a good point earlier about the addiction of paying people more from the federal government, that becomes the status quo if that's your voter base. That's not even good in many cases for the people we're giving that money to. I think we should stop paying people to stay at home when actually the top obstacle for many businesses to grow, you guys will know this well, is filling vacant job openings. And so that is an obstacle to GDP growth is paying people more to stay at home than many of them earn to go back to work.